doesn't seem so evil. What if I told you that she might be right? Hey, Fascination here. Welcome to another episode of Toon Theory. And today, we have a very special yet mind-blowing episode that we are going to cover up today. Is Eclipsa really not that evil as we all think she is? Sure, in the cartoon series Star vs. the Forces of Evil, the King and Queen had always feared her, her rebel spirit, her powerful capabilities of using magic, also knowing the secrets of learning dark forbidden magic, and even left Muni for a monster in the name of love. Sure, those are some very strong points, but what if I told you that there is actually a logical reason behind all these deeds? That all these acts that she has done in the past is in fact done for very different reasons. But then you might be asking, But Eclipse is evil! The Disney XD promo trailer gave us a glimpse about what's to come in Season 3. Look at the goopy magic spewing out of the wand! She is evil! OBJECTION! Yes, I have seen the trailer. Yes, I have seen the magic turning into goop. And yes, I saw the wand broken into half too. But what if I told you that the entire trailer gave us only a glimpse of what's coming? Alright my viewers, Let's get this theory started. SPOILER ALERT! For those of you who haven't watched all three seasons of Star vs. the Forces of Evil, then may I suggest you to go and watch it. It's a really great show, and I guarantee that you'll love it. And when you're done, come back to this theory video. Okay, let's go. First, we must go back to the early days of Muni history. Mu Independence Day, where a long time ago, the first settlers were trying to find a land in search of a place where they would make a new land with new rules where their goals are all about searching a new life, new goals, freedom, and even food and corn for all they can feast. Then they found a land that no one has not claimed yet, and so they decided to call this land Muni. Then they created and adapted into a monarchy system, where the queens and the princesses are the dominant gender when taking care of a kingdom, renaming the last names of their husbands, and even in charge of the biggest most sacred heirloom of the Butterfly family. The Royal Budget Wall. It was all great and all, peace, food, and even freedom for all the people. That is, until the monsters came and probably took their food, land, and even attacked the people because the land belongs to the monsters. Clearly, the Mumins invaded their land, took away their food, their resources, and many things that probably belongs to this land and its monster. After that, the Mumins had to react somehow. If they want to live and stay forever on this land, they have to attack the monsters with their men, upgrading their equipment and weapons, all thanks to the Queen's magic. So they fight with all their might, strength, and even their wits to take down every single monster that invaded their kingdom. And in the end, they finally won! Muni is saved. A holiday was born, and every year the Mumins celebrate Independence Day every single year. Isn't that wonderful? This would be a more logical explanation about how history was made about Independence Day. But fascination? What does this has to do with Queen Eclipse not being evil? Hold on, I'll get that in a moment. So let me continue. As we know the basic history about Independence Day, let's move on to Season 2, Episode 23, Into the Wand, where we get to see inside the Grandma Room, where the memories of the wand hides the biggest memories of our Queen's past. As we continue to navigate across the room, Star witnesses the first tapestry, Selena the Shy. What hides behind the golden fan the hand does sweetly hold? A trove of cosmic secrets that never will be told. Now, what does this mean, you're asking? Well, maybe Selena knows the biggest secrets behind the creation of the cosmos. She might have known where did magic come from, the creation of life, why do we exist, and even many, many more questions about humanity's existence. And if you also see the tapestry some more, there seems to be people bringing them stuff to the queen. They are just the queen's assistants, since it's their job to please their queen. But if we zoom into the viking, we can clearly see that he is holding a food shaped as a ship. Isn't that familiar now, don't you think? Kinda looks like the exact same ship we saw from the Independence Day episode. What if I told you that Selina the Shy is in fact the first queen of the butterfly heirloom to ever land on the land of Muni, 
and probably the first founders of the magic book spell too. Also, the first to possess a wand filled with magic too. And if that's not enough to convince you, check out the stone shape that is next to the painting. Is it just me? Are we seeing things here? Check out that particular shape one more time and tell me, what do you see? Did you guess it? Those are wings. And not just any type of wings, they are butterfly wings. Proven that Selena the Shy is perhaps the first queen of the butterfly family to ever land on Muni. And also probably the first queen to ever make a secret deal with the universe to utilize their magic so they can use it as they please. Then we move on towards Solaria, the monster card. Gosh, that sounds like a title that is best not to describe it. Anyway, by reading the stone, it says, A castle stormed is a hero born, with might as strong as steel, kneels the void before her and the crushing forces she wields. Alright, we can obviously tell that she was the hero who fought the monsters while the castle was invaded. She was the princess that probably lead a chance or perhaps a winning chance against the monsters. Without her, the monsters would have taken over us instead. And now for the main theory. Eclipsa, the queen of darkness. Eclipsa, queen of Muni, to a Mumin king was wed, but took a monster for her love, and away from Muni fled. This description right here intrigued me with a ton of questions in my mind. But let's go over one by one. Here we go. Let's talk about magic. We have seen it all. Dark magic, light magic, fire magic, crystal magic, etc. But let's separate them professionally now, shall we? Alright, we have magic that everybody in the whole universe uses it. The stuff we use for the narwhal blast, rainbow punch, even fire and crystal and many other elements that our magic counselors may have used as well. We're gonna call it positive magic, or positive energy, if you want to call it that way. This magic is given or learned to those who have a helpful or good heart, or you can just simply be a prodigy and learn all those spells like a boss. This is the magic that probably Selena made a deal with, so they can use it for their own good to help with everyone. Now, let's talk about the other magic, the black goop that glows with the color green when active. Let's call that black goop negative energy. Now. You're wondering, why negative energy when you can call it negative magic instead? I will answer that in a moment, because what you're about to witness will make a lot of sense when this explanation is done. Anyway, developed by Toffee after the aftermath of the Whispering Spell, negative energy is a type of substance that can take any type of magic and convert it into a null magic repellent black substance, and that substance feeds off by the users negative emotions, which can cause the user to fulfill any negative desire to come true. As we've seen in the show, Stars 1 was cleaved and infected by the negative energy, all thanks to Toffee's plan. And that every time Star feels a negative emotion, whether she is angry, jealous, nervous, or anything, that magic fulfills its work, giving us the disastrous results we need to fulfill the negative dream to come true. This stuff is not magic and here are a few good reasons why first if we go back to season 2 episode 25 page turner we can see a magician who is already clearly infected by the negative energy substance he just passes the security slot with no problem some of you might say that it's a plot hole and that it was left there for comical relief purposes but oh, ho, 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 boy but you are wrong and i got proof second the battle of muni toffee Prepare for the fields, ladies and gents, because we are going to tackle against a field trip episode here today. After the scene when Queen Moon gave the finger to Toffee in exchange for Star's safety, where Toffee flat out lied to them just so he can stay alive, the part where Queen Moon snapped and performed the forbidden spell against him, something strange has happened. Nothing happened. Why is there no magic coming out of the wand when clearly black magic is supposed to work since all the magic has turned dark at that moment. Here is the final truth. It's not magic! If we go back to the episode, Page Turner, when Star and Marco flipped the Forbidden Magic spell page, written by Eclipsa, we can see that Marco was infected by dark magic, not infecting Star at all. Well, ain't that strange? If you look closely at Marco when he was possessed, what color was the magic he was spilling out? Dark magic. Not the black goop that glows green! 
So if we go back to the scene where the queen attempted to use her forbidden spell against Toffee, it was not activated because Eclipsa's dark magic is still positive magic or positive energy. If the spell did work, then Toffee would have been destroyed. Eclipsa would have been freed and Moon would have had a darker tone onto her body. Now, if we go back and check the inscription where it said, but took a monster for her love and away from Muni fled. Isn't it very odd that it had a description like that about the queen? This took me around days just to figure out what could those messages meant until I finally made a conclusion. What if Eclipsa was being possessed or controlled by someone? What if she isn't the entire blame to the situation? I mean, think about it. Look at the way she was behaving. When we go back to the scene where Romulus freed Eclipsa by permission from the queen, she came breathing heavily spelling out her first words. B4, B4, B4. All terrified and confused. Now, some of you are saying, maybe that was just a bluff. Maybe she lied, just so she can get what she wants. But if you go back to season two, episode 34, crystal clear. The victims that Romulus crystallizes them cannot see or feel once they become in a crystal form. They only remember the last thing they saw before they get crystallized. Meaning that Eclipsa was not attacking anybody, but instead she was just simply hungry. Hungry for some quick snacks for those snookers right there. Then Romulus came out of the back and BAM! Turned her into a crystal as she was about to order snack from the vending machine. Thinking that she might have been evil because Romulus' purpose is to crystallize anybody who is evil according to him. But however, there must be a purpose why she was frozen, right? Because if it was a mistake, the High Commission of Magic would have told Romulus to free her. Then why didn't they free her? Here's why. By watching these episodes many times, I have made a possible conclusion about how Eclipsa was a victim. Let's say that Eclipsa was a kind of naive princess. She probably act and behave similarly to Star Butterfly. Always thinking about having fun, loves candy and sugar. She was probably your typical innocent average princess. Until one day, her mother died, leaving her off the pressure to become an early queen, making her do choices at such a young age for the sakes of Mew. And after the situation, she was met by a monster, which is the monster we saw on the tapestry. He probably befriended her, comforted her, and even showed her that not all monsters are bad. You know, by not judging a book by its cover. Anyway, Eclipsa was already mentally broken after her mother's loss, so she was willing to take comfort from anyone at this point. Even a monster has a chance to heal her wounds for her lost mother. And if you thought this could get any weirder, check this out. One day, when Eclipsa was healing her emotional wounds, the monster was already strong enough to convince her to teach her how to use dark magic. Now, you're thinking, how can monsters teach dark magic to Eclipsa, when in fact that you need a wand to learn how to use it? Ball. Some creatures are actually lucky to use magic without a wand, like Star's Dip Down move. Also, Season 1, Episode 13, Lobster Claw. When Lobster Claw was given a chance to become a bad monster, he grabbed the wand and something strange happened. Those arms and claws had grown out of those dark marks that looks exactly the same as Moon and Eclipsa. But if he turns over to Star, the marks are gone, symbolizing the good that's inside of him. What I'm saying is that, what if Eclipsa learned dark magic from the monster he met? He could have been the one who taught Eclipsa all the Dark Forbidden spells. He was probably the one who taught Eclipsa the Immortal Breaking spell, which requires a dark contract in order to use it. But where do you think she might have used it? Well, by furthering the future, what we know is that she met a boy at some point in the Kingdom of Muni. This boy was supposed to be the future husband for Muni's kingdom, the one they should be in charge for the kingdom's next generation to keep on passing the butterfly name for generations and generations. So they wed together, leaving the monster back to his place, probably friend zoning a monster. But the monster was not happy. So instead, he decided to do one crazy thing that could finally bring them down together. Mind control. And what did the monster did? He mind control Eclipsa, turning her into one of them attacking the kingdom, and running away from Muni against her own will. And if you don't believe me, well, check out the tapestry one more time and tell me, what do you see in the pic? The show made a big emphasis on this particular scene, 
when Star grabbed Toffee's finger on the floor. We see Eclipsa and the monster together with the exact same eyes. By seeing Eclipsa's eyes, you can see that they are glowing with a yellowish glow. These are the eyes of a monster spell that she has fallen into. It was never a sign of love. She was perhaps a victim by the monster spell. And I have further proof it's not over yet. When Eclipsa was being possessed at that moment and finally snapped after that moment, she was probably shocked and decided to take actions. This is the part where she decides to do what she shouldn't do, and yet she did. Use the mortal breaking spell to take her monster love down. And where did she point it to? Into her heart. Now, did he die? Yes and no. The monster and the body died, but not the soul pieces left in it, because it was already inside the dark magic that Eclipsa already learned, meaning that Eclipsa possesses a grudge inside her that will forever remain on her spell and her spell book. And also, possibly some of the black magic probably landed on one of those random monsters. After all that mess that has happened, Eclipsa wanted a break and went towards the candy vending machines. When she was about to order a candy bar, that's where the monster possessed her back. And that's where Romulus pops out of the scene behind her and crystallized her. But what about Toffee and those Eclipsa related symbols? Remember, the episode when Luda was possessed by Toffee during the entire second season and the Battle of Muni, they were a green glow, not yellow. And it was developed by a monster. But what if I told you that Toffee is not a monster that is actually from Muni, if not a more powerful and immortal being? Not monster, nor human, if not a being that can possess people, has great intelligence and even wise and cunning to the point of tricking and convincing people to fall or fail on them. My friends, we don't know who this super being is, but we can safely call it for now that it's a super monster or a super demon. And it's the biggest threat that the universe and the high commission of magic would ever face. Look at Toffee and see what he's wearing. Two skull masks, meaning that those are the victims that he plans to murder them soon so he can free the monsters and gain their freedom back. But the deep question remains, how did he know about Eclipse's symbol? How does this reptilian know about a queen that died more than 300 years ago? Well, easy my friend. Toffee isn't the one who is exactly pulling out the strings here. If not, the Super Demon, also known as Eclipsa's husband. Toffee is just a vessel, a decoy, used by the Super Demon, just so he can find a way to free Eclipsa and possess her one more time to take down not only the people of Muni, if not to take over the entire universe. Here's proof, Battle of Muni. Marco punched Toffee's heart out, but was there a heart? No, there was no heart in it. It's a vessel, a body full of goop. Anyway, it took many years to perfectly plan out a strategy like this. Even invented a new kind of magic that is not even magic, if not the black glowish green glob that can convert and null any type of magic. And even almost succeeded on killing Star inside his own filth. So. Toffee is just a puppet from the mastermind, and if the plan fails, well, time to go for plan B. If Toffee is destroyed, Eclipsa is free, meaning that the mastermind's idea would be to use Eclipsa to not only possess Eclipsa, but also Moon as well to try and get revenge on Eclipsa and taking over the universe as she possesses a queen next to her. But they can never affect our favorite star butterfly to fall for mind control because her heart is just simply too good. She's not interested in learning dark magic and she was not affected by any dark spells. Heck, even her transforming scene showed us the brimming light of hope. She is positive. She is hope. She is a shining star. But hey, that's just a theory. A tune theory. Thanks for watching. So, you like the episode? Like what I'm doing? Share this video to everyone you know. Your friends, your family, 
heck, even your enemies, just to troll them. Just joking. Anywho, thanks a million for watching all the way through. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be having one of those snookers that they offer in that vending machine. Oh yeah, got me some snookers here. See you in the next episode.